a very good evening uh, to you all uh, dear brothers uh, and sisters in christ so we thank our uh, heavenly father and we thank our lord jesus christ uh, for giving us uh, yet another day in our life uh, to prove our faithfulness to him so last few weeks uh, we studied a very important things about uh, god's divine plan you see and uh, we studied about the three worlds the secret about the first world the second world and the third world and today we're going to see a very important uh, uh, subject uh, in the bible you see and that is uh, based on our verse uh, which our lord jesus uh, told so let us read that verse in matthew 7 chapter 13 and 14 matthew 7 chapter 13 and 14 Enter ye in. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay from there. Very clear. Please read. Enter ye in the in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. See here, Jesus uh, tells about the uh, two ways. Uh, you see, there is a, you see, broad way, and uh, there is a narrow way. So Jesus here tells about two ways. Uh, and what does he say? He tells, "Enter you into the straight gate." That means narrow gate. Why? Because wide is the gate, broad is the way that leads to. Destruction and many are going in that one, but uh, you see uh, why they are going because the narrow way is uh, gate is very narrow and the way itself is uh, very narrow and only few are able to find it. So this way, uh, when a man has to choose, so generally there are many thoughts regarding this one. but some people think that as soon as a man dies his soul will be going to heaven and on the way he will be having two ways you see he has to choose either way uh, the broad way or the narrow way and many people all the dead souls all the worldly people will be going in the broad way but uh, only few people will choose the narrow way that leads to heaven or else they will go to hell that's what the generally the people think the broad way leads to hell and the narrow way leads to heaven but uh, have you clearly observed this verse does this verse tell that the broad way goes to uh, you see hell and the narrow way goes to heaven let us read the verse again brother please brother brother please read the verse again 7 chapter 13 and 14 and to ye in At the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, mm -hmm. and many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. You see, what did Jesus say? The broad way leads to. destruction and not hell it doesn't say that it goes to hell but it says it goes to destruction at the narrow way it says it narrow way goes to life it leads to life not that it goes to hell or heaven so what is this uh, destruction which a broad way leads to and what is this life which the narrow way leads to the abhran see the end of this broad way is destruction so which is this destruction which a man suffers at the end of his life is it a financial disaster or else is it the accident you see that happens in his life where he meets with so many accidents or else is it a exam failure or is it a very you see uh, aged infirmities that the man faces or is it a sudden sickness that comes in the life which destruction is the broadway speaking 
if you see the brain it says the broadway leads to destruction that means the end of the broadway is destruction so which is the destruction which a man faces at the end of his life if you see it is none of this but uh, it is death which includes everything so the broadway actually goes to death you see that is the destruction which actually jesus was speaking of is it uh, given in the bible yes let us read proverbs 14:12 proverbs 14:12 emmanuel brother or uh, abhishek brother yeah i will read pro 14:12 there is a way which seems right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death see there is a way that seemeth right to man you see there is a way that's very pleasant and correct in the sight of man but the end uh, there are for the ways of death uh, you see that's what the the world the world ways are you see there are so many people tell no enjoy your life make it sweet uh, you see ah uh, it is like ice cream enjoy it before it melts uh, you see the way of enjoyment the way of pleasure the way of selfishness uh, the way of joy that is the way of broad way going to destruction so who was the one who inaugurated this broadway if you see it was our father adam who first uh, sinned against god and who you see inaugurated uh, that uh, broadway he was the first person to cut the ribbon and come inside the broadway you see dear brethren so adam uh, once uh, he entered the broadway he took him nearly 930 years to to complete uh, that uh, path of the broadway but today the broadway has become so smooth you see that within a very short span of life of nearly 50 years 60 years some even for 30 years they reach the end of the broadway that is dead and why what is the reason for it the reason for it is sin dear brethren the sin you see that actually leads uh, man uh, you see into the path of uh, this death uh, that is sin okay now what is the meaning of sin in the bible you see what does the bible say you see what is the meaning of sin some people even don't know the uh, meaning of sin you see one people one person even ask me brother what is sin being a christian we should be aware of sin what is sin you see all unrighteousness everything against the will of god is sin let us read first john 5 17 first john 5 17 vivek shankar brother can you read first john 5 17 vivek brother okay abhishek brother can you read first john 5 17 all unrighteousness is sin and there is a sin not unto the dead dead yeah. mm see all unrighteousness is sin everything you see everything is sin and when adam sinned you see god condemned the whole world to death in adam we are all condemned to death because of our father adam dear brethren you see the bible says that through one man sin entered into the world and the death because of the sin and this death passed upon everybody god condemned everybody to death because god knew as adam has sinned similarly the whole mankind will also sin hence the entire mankind are condemned to death read romans 5:12 romans 5:12 uh stephen brother can you read romans 5:12 Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. See, whereby by one man sin entered the world, not by every man, that everybody has sinned. No, not of individual sin. It is the like sin of the father Adam that we are all dying, dear brethren. Therefore, you see, in today's. Uh, scale of justice uh, if you put sin there is a tip for different uh, you see scale of justice uh, you see in the court uh, they won't give the same penalty for a person who was uh, stolen or killed elephant uh, 
and uh, same penalty for a person who has stolen a few groundnuts. Uh, it varies, uh, you see, depending upon the magnitude of sin. But in God's sight, let it be simple, let it be big sin or let it be small sin, everything is the same in God's justice. Uh, sin is sin. There is no variation in the sight of God at all, dear brethren. You see, and like for example, lies. You see, telling lies. Uh, Telling lies is also sin. Now, can we tell lies? Should we tell lies? If you see, no. Because lies also is a sin. Now, why? Because Bible says the devil is the founder of lies. Let us read John 8, 44. John 8, 44. Uh, who can read? Emmanuel, brother, can you read? Okay, I'm reading it. John 8, 44. Ye are of your father the devil. And the lost of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and about not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. He is a liar and father of it. Uh -huh. So the Bible says the Satan is the founder of lies. He is the father of lies. He is the one who invented lies. Because in Garden of Eden, he was the one who told the first lie. Therefore, the Bible says that he is the father of lies. See, if you tell lies, then it is like uh, sinning against God. You know, the first lie told was uh, by himself. He deceived uh, Eve, Mother Eve, to eat the forbidden fruit. And today, if you see, average, a man speaks nearly 250 lies. You may wonder, brother, how is it possible? Brother? How can you speak 250 lies per day? Yes. You see, when doing business, they speak lies. Oh, sir, please reduce this. <laughs> if they tell, what would they tell? They would tell, no, this is very expensive item. This is an imported item. This is an export item. I have bought only for you. I can't reduce the rates. You see, I'm having just only 2 rupees margin, only 10 rupees margin. You see. All these things are lies. Even if you go for a market to purchase any vegetables, you see, huh? they will tell this tomato is 20 rupees. What would the woman tell? They will tell immediately, no, 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 how come 20 rupees? 20 rupees is very expensive. See, your neighbor is giving for 15 rupees, 10 rupees. Huh? You also give. You see, that's also a lie, dear brother. You see, huh? and uh, while feeding a kid, what does the mother tell to the kid? Oh, eat or else what will happen? Police will come and catch you. <laughs> I'm making the police as a thief. You see? And we'll have in food. If somebody comes into the house, you see? When we invite them to the food, what would they tell? They would tell, no, no, just add my food. Oh, my stomach is full. That's all the lies. In, in case if they eat also, huh? What would they tell? Oh, this food is so delicious. I have never had such a food. You see, dear brother, this type of lies is lie. Let it be anything. You see, and the knowledge of sin in earlier days was actually attained at more than nearly 30 years age. But today, everybody has the knowledge of sin. Like, for example, you see, the children... Uh, while they are going to school and college itself, uh, the booze and fag and everything. Uh, you see? So they have uh, all these uh, bad habits with them. Uh, you see? And uh, they drink. Uh, you see? And especially now it's become a status quo of the society that the parents drink with the children and think that this is a status. Uh, you see? It's a dignified family if they're doing all these things publicly. You see? Earlier days, uh, the thought of marriage used to be at around nearly after 30 years. But now what has happened? Huh? Now only in the teenage only they would have started. That's the reason government has put a limit uh, of 21 years and 18 years. Uh, dear brethren. So this broad way, because of these types of sin has become very smooth. Uh, and the entire mankind are walking in that path uh, because of the sin of Adam. After Adam sinned, Nearly after nearly 2,000 years, God gave the law through Moses. And that was a way of escape from this broad way. And if anybody kept the law perfectly without even uh, breaking uh, one of the laws, they could continually live in this earth. Uh, 
Let us read Leviticus 18.5. Leviticus 18.5. Uh, Abhishek Bhadar, can you read? Abhishek Bhadar? You shall therefore keep my status and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. Aha. You see? If uh, you keep my status, I am a judgment, sir. You see? A man that keeps it shall live by it. You see? But unfortunately, none of the Jewish people could keep the law. You see? Because they were all perfect. They were all sinners. Hence, law was a failure. This escape of the law from the Broadway was a failure. You see? Read Romans 3.20. Romans 3.20. Raj Badar, would you like to read Romans 3.20? Yes, brother. The, therefore, by the deaths of the law, there shall no flesh to justify in this sight of our sight for by the law is the knowledge of him sin. Thank you, brother. See, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified. You see, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Hence, none were justified by the deeds of the law. All were condemned. Therefore, Apostle Paul tells in Galatians 2.21 that uh, if righteousness was supposed to come by the Lord, and the death of Christ was vain. So, if Christ has died for us, that is a clear proof that none of the mankind could have escaped, uh, you see, death and attained eternal life through the law. Therefore, dear brethren, when there was no other way, God sent his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross to open a way of escape from this broad way. Which is that way? Let us read Hebrews 10.20. Hebrews 10.20. Uh, Thomas, brother, would you like to read? Can you read Hebrews 10.20? Okay. Uh, Stephen, brother, can you read? By a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. See, Jesus, sir. Has opened a new and a living way. Where did the narrow way go? Narrow way goes to life. So this is the new and the living way which Jesus opened by his flesh. That is the veil. We all remember, you see, when Jesus died on the cross, what happened? The veil to the temple was wide open. It cut open from the top to the bottom. You see, that is the way, the access to the heavenly salvation was opened by our Lord Jesus Christ. Hence, Jesus said, Enter into, into the straight gate. You see, because narrow is the way which lead it to life and few be there that find it. Now, have you ever wondered why is the way opened so narrow? You see, while the way for destruction is very broad, everybody are going but the way for eternal life is open so narrow that uh, even not everybody can find it, it seems. Why is it? Uh, why did God create such a way? Like for example, imagine the express highway we have all over the world. How do the government prepare the express highway? Where everybody are walking? You see? Do they, do they make it in a very small way? You see? No. You see? They make it in a very broad way so that everybody can walk it and move fastly, comfortably and have life, you see. But how is the yeah, way which is inside the villages, uh, the foot trodden path, uh, where only few people are going up, you see. It is a very difficult path. Uh. Then God could have opened a broad way no? while going for uh, life. So that everybody could have walked, no? It would have been better, no? You see, he should have opened a narrow way for life. He could have opened a broad way for life and narrow way for destruction. So that only few can go. But why 
God did not do like this. To understand this one, we should understand where does the Naravi go? The Bible says that Naravi goes to life. Now what is this life? If we get the answer for this, what is the meaning of life that leads in Matthew 7, 13 and 14, the Naravi leads to life. Which is this life we find out? We will get the answer to our questions. Okay. Life means, see, God has created various levels of creation. God has created mankind on the freshly creation. And below mankind, below human beings, there are animals, uh, you see, who are created a little bit, uh, you see, lower than human beings. Uh, they also have life. And below this one, if you go, we have the vegetation, the trees, uh, the plants, uh, you see, they also have life. All these are life. And if you go above, above on the spiritual realm, there are angels who are high above than a mankind. They also have got life. And still high if you go, there are archangels also. But above all, you see, there is God. He is the source of all this life. He is the fountain of life. Dear Dren, you see, he is the one who gives life to everybody. Life example, the sun is there. When the sunlight falls upon a brick uh, or a plant or any other things, it reflects the same light, uh, you see, but not the same uh, quantum, not the same uh, exact, uh, you see, uh, light of the sun, but it reflects uh, its characters. Uh, like brick can reflect only the character of a brick. Uh, it can't reflect the uh, character of a sunlight. But if the same sunlight falls upon a diamond, the diamond will sparkle in such a way that the diamond itself is like a beautiful light. You see, but does it mean that a diamond has its own light? No. The source of light is the sun. That is a very, very important thing. So similarly, the source of life, the main life, the fountain of life is, uh, you see, the one and supreme God. When Jesus said about the narrow way that leads to life, which life was he saying? Was he speaking about the angelic life or archangelic life? No, he was speaking about the life which God himself is having. The, the, the nature which God himself is having, the divine nature, the immortality nature. Jesus was the first one who inaugurated this narrow way and walked in this narrow way and achieved this divine nature of immortality. So Jesus did not have immortality when he came and died on the cross. If he had, how could he die on the cross? Immortality, the word immortality means no death. When Jesus, you see, came and died on the cross, it means that he did not have immortality. But when did God give him immortality? Only after his resurrection. So Jesus clearly says this one when he was alive. Let us read John 5.26. John 5.26. Vivek Badan, can you read John 5.26? Vivek, sir, you have a screen on the screen. You have a screen on the screen. You have a screen on the screen. Okay. Ashish, can you read? For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. See, as the Father is having life within himself, so has he given the Son to have life in himself. And when did Jesus achieve this one, dear brethren? Jesus achieved this one after proving faithfulness to God until the death on the cross. After his death on the cross, Jesus was resurrected to this divine nature of immortality. Read Revelation 118. Uh, Abhishek Buddha, can you read Revelation 118? Abhishek Buddha, are you there? Okay, Emmanuel Buddha, can you read Revelation 118? Okay, Revelation 118. <clears throat> I am he that he lived and was dead. And behold, I am alive for everyone. I mean, and have the keys of hell and of death. See, I am he that liveth and was dead. He was dead. 
But now I am alive forevermore. That means he has the power of immortality. Jesus can die no more. So as uh, Jesus was the one who see who attained that one first one. Now God has told that the same opportunity we will give unto us. If we are faithful, if we walk in the same narrow path and follow the footsteps of Jesus, the same reward which Jesus got will be given to us also. Therefore, Jesus is our example. 1 Peter 2.21 Stephen Brother, can you read 1 Peter 2.21? For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Ah, that we should follow his footsteps. So Jesus is our example. Okay. If we are faithful, you see, God will give us the same nature as him. Sir. Let us read, you see, uh, Revelation 3.21. Revelation 3.21. Uh, Abhishek Badar, you are there? Okay. Thomas Badar, can you read? Are you there? Kishor Badar? Okay. Uh, Emmanuel Badar, please read Revelation 3.21. Revelation 3.21 To him that overcome to will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and I am set down with my father in his throne. Ah, see? Jesus has promised to whom? He who overcomes even as I overcame, I will give him the opportunity to sit down with my father in his throne. This is how Jesus sat on the throne by overcoming. Therefore, dear brethren, in our life, there will be a lot of obstacles, a lot of problems, a lot of trials, a lot of persecutions. We need to fight all these things. We need to overcome all these things. Then only, we are eligible to sit on the throne. Read Romans 2.7. Raj brother, can you read Romans 2.7? To them who by Patience continues in the well-doing. Seek for the glory and the honor and immortality, eternal life. See? To whom? Who by patience continues in well-doing, seek for glory, honor and immortality. So those people who continually do good until the end, they will get this immortality and eternal life. Let us read Second Peter 1.4. Uh, Second Peter one four. Thomas brother, can you read Second Peter one four? Stephen brother, can you read Second Peter one four? Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption. That is in the world through lust. Thank you, brother. So, that you may be partakers of the divine nature. See, that is the reason God has given so many promises uh, in the Bible that we may overcome and attain and sit on the same throne. Hence, uh, just imagine to be like God, to sit uh, along with Him on the same throne. Is it so easy? No, dear brother. It is not uh, such an easy position that God can give it to any layman. It's a very precious uh, thing. Hence, to be like God. Imagine, huh? can this opportunity be given to everybody in this world? You see, are everybody really faithful to God? No. Hence, uh, this way is made very narrow. Hence, uh, there are lot of trials on this uh, narrow way. Why? So that uh, they may struggle. In the struggle, they may prove faithfulness to God. Uh. Dear brethren, hence uh, the Bible says that uh, it is not a very easy path to go to heaven. Let us read Acts 14.22. Uh, Emmanuel Buddha, can you read Acts 14.22? Okay, Acts 14.22. Confirming the souls of the disciples 
and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. See, that we through much tribulation should enter into the kingdom of God. Tribulation. We can't enter into the kingdom of God and better flows the spirit. So tribulation is there. The trials are there. The testings are there. Therefore, Jesus said, you shall have tribulation. Not that you might have. You may have. No. He said, you will have and you shall have. Read John 16.33. Uh, John 16.33. Rajmadar, can you read John 16.33? The things I have spoken into you, that in my that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. See, but ye have good cheer, I overcome the world. In this world you shall have tribulation. You shall means it is a condition. You definitely there will be tribulation, sir. So, yeah, but don't worry. Jesus said, I have overcome, I will help you to overcome. The special thing about this one is that whenever we have trials, God will definitely open us a way for escape. 1 Corinthians 10.13 1 Corinthians 10.13 uh, Stephen brother, can you read 1 Corinthians 10.13? There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above Okay, thank you. So, there is not a temptation uh, which is not common to man. So, whatever the temptations we get is very common to man only. But God is faithful. He would not allow us to be tempted beyond our measure. But as the temptation comes, uh, He will help us and show us a way to escape and help us to sustain it. That will that is uh, the God's grace uh, which God has given us. Uh. Therefore, dear brethren, in all this tribulation, we should... Uh, Rejoice. Why? Because if we are faithful to God until our death, uh, then God will give us a divine nature. So, in this divine nature, what will the church class do? If you see, the faithful church war on the divine nature will rule with our Lord for a thousand years. Read Revelation 20 verse 6. Abhishek brother, can you read Revelation chapter 20 verse 6? Abhishek brother, are you there? Okay, Emmanuel brother, can you read Revelation 20, verse 6? Revelation 26. Blessed and holy is the death hath fought in the first resurrection, and such the second death hath no power. But they shall be perished, they shall be freest of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Ah, you see, blessed and holy is he that partake in the first resurrection. And says there is no power of second death. You see, that means they can't die at all. Yeah, they shall be priest. You see, and king with Christ. And they shall rule with Christ for a thousand years. Dear brother, and that is the opportunity which God has promised to the faithful church. How will they be resurrected? The Bible says, you see, they will be in the same way as Jesus was. How was Jesus? That example is given to us in the Bible, when uh, Apostle Paul, when he was Saul, on the way to Damascus, Jesus appeared to him. How would Jesus appear? He was brighter than the sun at the noonday. In such brightness, in such glory, you see, God will give us that divine nature. Okay. When Jesus returns the second advent, the first thing he will do is that once the church is complete, he will close this narrow way. So once this narrow way is closed, what will happen to the rest of the mankind? Because we just now saw everybody on the walking on the Broadway. But it's only few people who come out of it by walking on the narrow way. And what about the rest of the people? As God made no plan for them. You see, is there no plan for them? Yes, surely God must have made a plan for them also. What is that plan? The Bible says that uh, Jesus is the true light that lighted every man that committed into the world. The Bible says that Jesus is the world's savior. 
The Bible says there is no other salvation given under heaven than in the name of Jesus Christ. John the Baptist said, beholding Jesus Christ, he said, behold the Lamb of God, take it away the sins of the whole world. The Bible says, you see, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that everybody might be saved. If so many verses are there like this in the Bible, then what is the plan which God has made for the whole world? Yes, dear brethren, there is one more way with Jesus at his second advent, when he comes, he will close the narrow way, but after it, he will open another way. Which is that way? That way in the Bible is called as highway. What is it called as? Highway. It is called as the highway of holiness. Let us read Isaiah 35.8. Isaiah 35.8. Thomas brother, can you read Isaiah 38? Would you like to read? And then the highway shall be there, and a way it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those the the way the wayfaring men who fools shall not err there. Very good, brother. See? A highway shall be there. A way it shall be called the way of holiness. That way is called the way of holiness, it seems. Dear brethren, and it shall be for the wayfaring men, everybody, even the fools shall not make a mistake, it seems. Now, who is the fool in the Bible? You see, the fool in the Bible is a person who doesn't believe in God. Psalms 14.1 Psalms 14.1 Abhishek brother, you there? Abhishek brother. Okay, Emmanuel brother, can you read Psalms 14.1? Psalms 14.1. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. You they see, are corrupt. The fool has, uh, continue. They are corrupt. They have done abdominal works. There is none that doth good. See, the fool has said there is no God. Seeing all this creation, who can tell there is no God, dear brethren? But there are people who say there is no God. But in the thousand years, when Jesus returns to the second coming, he is going to rule on this earth for a thousand years. The way on the path of God is a highway. It will be so clear that even the fool can't say that there is no God. He has to accept that there is a God. You see? And how will it be? Read Isaiah 35.9. Isaiah 35.9. Thomas brother, please continue. Isaiah 35.9. No, no land shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up to thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. See, no land shall be there on the highway. No ravenous beast shall be found, but it shall be for the redeemed ones. Now what is the meaning of this land? Land is not there, it seems. What is this land? Now? Huh? So in Christ's kingdom, in the thousand years, there won't be any lion. Let us read about lion in Isaiah 11, 6 to 9. Stephen, brother, can you read Isaiah 11, chapter 6 to 9? Stephen, brother. Stephen, brother, you're there. No lion should be there. No, any raven no, 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 no. will go up. Stephen, brother, mm. Isaiah 11, chapter, verses 6 to 9. 11, 11. Mm. Did somebody else read it? I have to open it up. Yeah. Or else, Emmanuel, brother, you have the Bible open with you. Can you read? Okay, I will read it. Isaiah 11, 16, 6 to 9. The wolf will live with the lamb. Hmm. The leopard will lie down with the goat. Hmm. The hmm. calf and the lion and the yearling together and a little child will lead them. Hmm. The cow will feed with the bear. Hmm. The young will lie to them, lie down together. Hmm. And the lion will eat straw with dogs. Are the the, the, the lion infant will shall eat what? Straw. 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 Like an ox. This is going to happen in Christ's kingdom. So in Christ's kingdom, lion will be there. Continue with that. Huh? Verse 8, the infant will play near the co uh, cobra's den, 
and the young child will put it put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all the holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with knowledge of the Lord as the waters covers the sea. Ah, the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters covers the sea. Is it filled now? Does everybody know about Christ? No. It is not filled with the knowledge of the Lord. None shall hurt or harm in my holy mountain. Everybody there, you see, destruction, harm, problem, hurting only. But when Christ comes, uh, he is going to rule for this thousand years and open this uh, highway. When he opens the highway, no lion shall be there, it seems. Uh, this is not the literal lion. Because literal lion will be there. It will be pure vegetarian. Remember the class of the first world? When Adam was there, along with Adam, all the first world, before the flood, the animals were eating what? Uh, pure vegetarian. The same thing will continue in Christ's kingdom. So lion will be there, it will eat straw. Then which is the lion that is not there in the highway? You know, our adversary is also called as lion in the Bible. Let us read 1 Peter 5.8. 1 Peter 5.8. Stephen Mother, can you read 1 Peter 5.8? Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, what about seeking whom he may devour? Hmm. You see, huh? be very careful. Your adversary, the devil, is like a roaring lion. When Christ comes, Satan will be bound. He shall bound Satan for a thousand years. Read Revelation 20, verse 2. Who can read Revelation chapter 20, verse 2? Revelation chapter 20, verse 2. Who can open the Bible and read? Okay, I will read it. Mm. Revelation chapter 20, verse 2. He mm. seized the dragon and the ancient serpent, who is the devil or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. Uh -huh. Bound him a thousand years. So, the lion is bound. The lion is not there. Okay. If the lion is the devil, Satan means, the, what is the meaning of the ravenous beast? The ravenous beast or this disco, club, bar, entertainment, you see, the wine store, the malls, the cinema theatres, all these are devouring extras, just like that. In Christ's kingdom, all these things will cease to exist, which draws away mankind away from God. All these things shall not be there at all. Then who will walk in that highway? Read Isaiah 35.10. Isaiah 35.10. Uh, Stephen, brother, can you read Isaiah 35 10? And the ransom of the Lord shall return. And the song of everlasting God on the hearts. Uh, brother, there is some disturbance in your network. Okay, anybody else can read? Emmanuel, brother. Or Thomas Father. Okay, I will read Isaiah 35. Mm -hmm. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to the Zion, Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sing us uh, sighing self clear away. Very good. Thank you, brother. So the ransomed of the Lord shall return. Remember the class about ransom. You see. We have taken the ransom subject now. First man, Adam, through whom sin came. And second man, Adam, not Jesus Christ. The sin was redeemed. So Jesus paid the ransom for everybody. The entire mankind will walk on the path of a highway. You see, how shall they return from the grave, from the dead condition? They shall return with joy and gladness. You see, everlasting joy upon their head, it seems, sir. So, in Christ's kingdom, dear brethren, all the dead people will come back to life. Uh, you see, and they will learn the truth. Uh, that all the deaf ears uh, shall be opened. Uh, all their eyes shall be opened. Uh, they shall understand the word of God then. Read Isaiah 29, 18 and 24. Isaiah 29 chapter was 18 and 24. Thomas Mother, can you read Isaiah 29, 18?
Okay. Raj brother, can you read? And in that day shall the youth of youth of beard, the world of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. There also that erred in spirit shall come uh, comes to understanding, and they're not, and they're not under that new. And you shall learn doctrines. See? Not see the the deaf. The deaf shall hear the words of book. Who are the deaf? Yes. There are so many deaf people who don't uh, have ears. They can't uh, listen. In Christ's kingdom, their ears will be opened. And there are other deaf people also who have ears, but they want to, they don't want to listen. Even these fools also won't mistake in a thousand years. All their eyes of understanding, ears of uh, understanding shall be opened. And those who argue also will come to understanding, it seems to me. Why? Because when Satan is born, everything will brought up to normal condition. So hence Christ, when he returns, he shall rule for a thousand years. Mankind will be brought back from this place of sin, death, the fallen condition, to the condition of perfection. Hence, the thousand year rule is given for Christ. Each and every mankind will be brought back to the condition of perfection. Now, how is this highway prepared? Generally, how does the highway is prepared in the world? They take out all the stones, all the boulders, all the trees, everything. All the obstacles will be taken off and the road will be made very flat. Straight, it will be made flat so that they may walk very smoothly, very fastly. You see, this is how Christ is also going to make this express highway. Read Isaiah 62 10. Stephen, brother, can you read? Can you come to a place where there is network and read? Yeah, I got it now. Go through, go through the gates, prepare ye the way of the people, cast up, cast up the highway, gather up the stone, lift up the standard for the people. Mm, you see? Go through, go through the gates, sir. Prepare the way for the people. Cast up the highway. How do you cast up? Gather out the stones. Lift up the standard for the people. Gather the stones. What are the stones? The stones of stumbling. Today, there are a lot of stones of stumbling. You see, there are many, many more false beliefs. If a cat goes from this direction to that direction, the work won't happen. But if the same cat comes in the reverse direction, everything will become successful. This is the false understanding. You see, the misconception, the Stumbling blocks, uh, which uh, is creating a problem for mankind to walk in the path of God. Uh, you see, they believe that if the crow touches them, they are, uh, you see, they become unclean. Uh, but Elia, uh, Elia ate food through the hands of the, you see, the crow. Nothing happened to him. Uh, you see, the so lot of other things, rituals are there. Uh, all these things will cease. Uh, they shall all be taken out uh, in Christ's kingdom. The lifting of the banner. The lifting of the banner is the banner of the truth. The banner of the truth shall be lifted high in Christ's kingdom. And you shall all come to the understanding of the word of God. Dear brethren. Hence, uh, this is the highway. Therefore, dear brethren, in the Bible, there are three ways. You see, first is the broad way where everybody is working. And next is the narrow way. Only few people who are escaping from the broad way are working in the narrow way. But what of the rest of mankind? For them, in Christ's kingdom, in his second advent, a thousand years uh, rule, a highway shall be opened. Hence, uh, this is the three ways of the Bible. If anybody has got any questions, any doubts, they can ask.